Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at low Earth orbit, the most critical part of our orbit. So let's dive right into it. So what the heck is this low Earth orbit? Well, it's a very simple thing. It is the beginning of space. You want to go to space, this is the first place you reach to. Be below it, you are still in Earth's atmosphere. Above it, you are in space. Now, there is no absolute line that describes it. So please do understand. It's not like, okay, at till 100 kilometer, there is no atmosphere. After 101 kilometer, there is pure vacuum. There is a giant gradient. But for our purposes, we define it as 100 kilometer or what we call Karman line. So if you cross that, you are in Leo, low Earth orbit. Now, the low Earth orbit is very simple. Orbiting is possible. Now, can you orbit very close to the surface of Earth? Yes, you can, but you would need infinite amount of energy to uh, handle the atmospheric drag and not to mention you don't end up hitting something like a mountain or things like that. So where we can practically do orbiting is low Earth orbit. That is why low and Earth is both used, orbiting. So you have to understand there are a lot of things. This is the first thing that we properly achieved. Now we always had a centric orbit as in like the orbits were elliptical, but circular orbit, uh, we achieved started properly achieving with Sputnik so do understand that and it is very close to earth now many people do not grasp the concept how close this is to earth basically if this is the earth low earth orbit is barely here barely like geostationary it won't even fit if I try to show on scale but low earth orbit is very close very very close 100 kilometer is not that far apart so that's what it is so let's talk it about in terms of human. What does it mean for humans? Now, this is very crucial. Low Earth orbit is below this belt, basically radiation belt. This vanilla uh, radiation belt is so dangerous. If you stay there for more than a few hours, you're dead. So basically, you can't build space station in this radiation belt. You have to be below it. So we generally build our, all our space station below vanilla radiation belt. That's why we don't have space station that is like, you know, uh, at GOA stationary. It will have certain benefits, but it because it will be like you know crossing this point or maybe directly end up in it we don't use it this radiation belt is very dangerous then the question becomes how the heck apollo astronaut bypassed this well as you can see the inner higher radiation one they skipped it like uh, it's not as wide as possible uh, you know the second one and second one they were very fast the rocket was going very fast so they had only a few milliseconds of exposure so that's the only way but if you're having a station where you're gonna be staying there for let's say months or years yeah you must be below this so that's why uh, we built our international space station our mere space station chinese space station everything below this this is the critical aspect and on top of that this is very easy to reach your rocket can reach that in 10 minutes flat that's it like you fire international uh, you know space shuttle boom in 10 minutes you are there that's how easy it is to reach now if you did that for geostationary you might spend uh, one or two hours in the rocket itself so you have to understand for human this is perfect like if you want to think uh, you know space tourism this is where it's gonna happen because higher than that it's very dangerous you have to exceed geostationary to like get away from these things or like even further than that you have to go as far as moon to make sure that not even a single faint of radiation is there i mean like cosmic radiation would be there but this trapped radiation won't be there so okay that's for human but we don't use space for humans we use space for communications so the first benefit is very cheap basically let's say satellite itself is not that expensive you can make satellite and if you are making hundreds of them it's very cheap it's more or less uh, like a very expensive computer but because of the launch cost it's very expensive so uh, basically if you want to send something to let's say geostationary your launch cost is um, undeniably awesome, like huge your uh, cost would be huge but if you want to send same amount of payload in low earth orbit your uh, cost would be dramatically reduced so that's why we want to use leo on top of that low latency this is critical aspect if you ever wondered why we don't have satellite communication in terms of uh, internet basically why don't your mobile have like you know uh, satellite g connection that's the simple reason current satellite network relies on uh, very high altitude satellites uh, the iridium satellites now they are still technically in leo so to understand that leo starts from 100 basically 500 they say 100 to 2000 kilometers so that band if you're below that 2000 kilometer band uh, from sea level you are still in leo so now you might be like how do we receive our tv satellite tv that's from geostationary 
कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ दैट जियो स्टेशनरी इज सो फार अपार्ट दैट इट हैज लूडक्रिसली बैड पिंग बेसिकली हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी मिली सेकेंड डिले इज ऑलवेज देयर एंड दैट्स बेयर मिनिमम दैट्स इफ देर इज नो अदर लेटेंसी एज इन लाइक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक लेटेंसी एंड सिग्नल कन्वर्सन लेटेंसी बट वेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट लियो यू कैन नैरो दिस डाउन टू फाइव टू टेन मिली सेकेंड बेसिकली गुड एंड अफ फॉर सिक्योरिटी प्रोसेस so that is why people are so focused on this you can't make a phone call if you have 150 millisecond of latency but if you have leo satellite constellation you can do that now it also has high sensitivity now to understand this aspect you have to understand inverse square law on which you can check my video here and i would urge you to if you, please pay attention to that video you have to understand uh, inverse square law to understand how space works so because of that we have very good communication basically your mobile does not need 10 megawatt of power just to communicate to a satellite it will need that if it's trying to communicate to uh, basically geo stationary and your receiver antenna will be like well, how big your uh, tv antenna is like dish antenna this big so if you want to do that on a mobile phone yeah you have to be on lower uh, lower earth orbit however everything is fine and dandy everything is good but it does come with a very severe consequences it has very poor coverage if you want to cover the whole earth like all over the planet you just want to cover it like let, let's say i pull out my phone it works anywhere on the planet you only need bare minimum of three satellites that's it three satellites in geo stationary orbit you covered the whole planet that's how powerful geo stationary that's why all our uh, broad communication happens from there basically tv communication happens because of that however uh, if you are so close to earth that you can make phone calls as in like satellite phone calls you ended up in scenario what we classify as poor coverage basically each satellite is moving so quickly that your orbit is taking barely 90 minutes you are like uh, taking orbit in 90 minutes so if you are looking in a map like this each of the circle that is here that is a satellite coverage so as you can see you need many satellite and each of them are also moving so you can't have a scenario where okay uh, you can only make a call when satellite a is near you you have to have a scenario where you can bounce between satellite and that's what iridium successfully figured out so you can understand you need lot of satellite to have coverage so if you want to have a very very reliable coverage there have to be overlap also as you can see this has very little overlap almost all satellite is just taking care of uh, you know one area so this is why we don't use it for everything this is what uh, elon musk wants to bypass using starlink project they want to like double this amount of, like this barely has like 1000 satellite barely uh, and uh, they want to go to 4000 satellite that way you will have enough coverage everywhere that you can use uh, basically broadband using your uh, satellite communication link so in communication please pay attention to inverse square law that will make it clear so how about that earth imaging satellites now if you want google earth that's how you get google earth you're not going to get google earth from geo stationary orbit you're going to need hubble space telescope looking back back at earth and even then you will not going to get a very uh, accurate photo simply because of inverse square law second uh, the features won't be very big basically the mountain range will look like a texture so let alone you are able ability to see anything uh, meaningful so we have to have if you want photos like this basically you where you can make out okay this is a building this is a race track this is a highway this is a shopping mall you want this kind of resolution which military wants you have to be in low earth orbit why again inverse square law so for this sort of thing to work you have to have low earth uh, orbits now this also allows us nature analysis basically if you see photos where people are showing now where uh, how glaciers are uh, melting or how rivers are migrating or things of that nature you need a very very high resolution photos for that you you can do that but you're not going to uh, receive clear crisp information if you did that from geo stationary and on top of that because atmosphere uh, act uh, like has a very serious uh, shadow casting onto the ground when you, when you have sun clouds and casting shadow geo stationary will uh, going to receive the uh, basically cloud it self when you are at low earth orbit you have a certain window where you can see the clouds properly basically you can even uh, analyze cloud formation properly so for that reason for nature analysis and weather pattern analysis we rely on your satellites now you can have satellites that are far away and we have satellites that are sun synchronous and other orbits we rely on them for uh, additional detail but if you want to make sure this is a tornado this is a typhoon and this is happening this is exactly where it's happening for those sort of accurate result you need leo to you know provide you high bandwidth data high Uh, much crisper analysis now then again the reason why this thing is popular is because national security basically a spy now it is true nowadays uh, military satellite can go very close like this image is a like uh, consumer level this is what you can buy from a satellite imaging company but uh, military grade like properly high grade military grade you can get so good that you can read 
uh, basically a car like which car it is can you go to a place where you can uh, do facial recognition no not that but they can uh, narrow one pixel to one uh, meter square so that is very good resolution they can see people moving now they, they don't have that uh, movie level magic where it's like oh, what is the time in your watch what newspaper you are reading that's not happening because not let's say even if you put a, let's say international space station or something bigger than that let's say a giant telescope looking down at us because there is so much shimmering in the atmosphere you will not see that best case scenario you can see people moving so that is why uh, there is no that magic thing is not happening where you know eye in the sky can see that uh, you know close to her atmospheric shivering itself will reduce everything so best case scenario you're gonna see okay this person is moving this person is moving that that's the best case scenario on top of that it does not have continuous connectivity because i told you like your orbit is so quick you're not gonna be in one place for very long time this is the reason why we don't have video footage of like you know that's why in usa invest so much money in the drone high altitude drones because drone can give you continuous uh, surveillance of area satellite is not gonna do that unless you have hundreds of satellite you know orbiting so if you want like okay this is the area i want to focus on this you will have like okay so satellite one is now in range okay you're gonna get five minutes of footage and then boom satellite two in footage so to do that you're gonna need hundreds of satellite so that is why we don't have a scenario like that where you can have like video quality do military use this yes absolutely this is more than good enough to see airports this is more than good good enough to see any icbm you know icbm trucks that are moving around more than good enough to see any big ship moving in the ocean heck even a small raft can be captured by this very accurately but it's not that movie level where you can or oh, what newspaper you're reading and full zoom and all that no that's not happening but it is still a very critical asset to national security but only consequences does not have continuous connectivity for that reason you have to have hundreds of satellite so what is the overall idea about it now overall the simplest thing that's why all rockets are measured in leo capacity if you ask uh, anyone what is the capacity of spacex falcon 9 uh, block 5 they will say let's say 10 ton now what is that 10 ton means that 10 ton is leo 10 ton to lower orbit or 20 ton to lower orbit now the reason for that is that's the easiest to reach and because you can establish orbit you people classify it as space however if you want to take the same rocket and like okay it's 20 ton i'm gonna send like say 10 ton to geostationary no it's it's gonna have very hard time doing that so please understand this is very easy to reach that's why everybody wants to reach leo first geostationary while awesome a it's very crowded b it's uh, not that useful in every scenario second even though it's very easy to reach, very hard to stay. That is the critical part. Now you can see what happens to a satellite that comes a bit too close. It is very hard to stay because even though I specified that there is no atmosphere in vacuum, there is still a some amount of oxygen or basically some amount of sodium, some amount of ozone, other things are there at that high altitude that over time that's going to add drag to it. So basically if you are in international space station, things like this you're gonna have a rocket that is gonna reboost you basically you have to uh, uh, increase the height of your orbit time and time and again because the drag that is happening to your uh, system is gonna slow you down so you can't be there and like in Jewish stationary you can put your satellite and forget about it but uh, here you have to constantly monitor it basically is it losing orbit or not because it's not stable in long term because of the drags so overall it's very useful for us if you want to do anything useful like satellite communication satellite internet you need leo you want to do uh, you know spying or resource mining and all that you need leo, leo. you want to put space hotel you need leo so leo is our uh, basically footing in the space now other another footing is the problem is that moon we can't be in mid uh, you know anywhere between because of van allen radiation belt so this is why it's very useful for us so this was my presentation on Leo. I hope you liked it or learned from it. In that case, please leave a like. If you uh, if you liked it really that much, please uh, click the ads shown in my video below. That will directly help me. And uh, if you didn't like it, don't worry about it. You can dislike it. I would urge you to press it twice. And uh, please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. And subscribe. Press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.